you know, math, it's a formula and all that stuff. It's like a toolbox of problem solving. There is no question that the music of the 21st century is vastly different from the styles of music from prior generations. The music of today often follows a clear, formulated process and can be perceived to generally lack the creativity and variance of the industry of old. But why is that? Why do so many hit songs of today seem to sound similar in both tone and lyric style? Today, we're going to examine the mark that two super producers have made on the industry of music and how the two have been directly responsible for most of the hit songs of the past two decades. Let's go back to the dawn of the music industry. Commercial music as a whole began as an industry that was wholly dependent on extremely talented and creative individuals, and groups being able to write songs that would not only hold listeners' ears, but would be able to sell on a massive scale. In America, names like Bob Dylan, Jerry Lieber, Mike Stoller, and Taylor Swift are perfect examples of musical talents who were able to use their given talent to write successful songs on a massive scale. These artists' unique perspectives on love and life shines through in their art, and typically when you hear one of their songs, you know who wrote it, even if you can't tell by the vocal performance. However, artists like these are slowly fading away. The music industry has slowly morphed into a monotonous machine with a select few star producers and writers becoming responsible for a large majority of hit songs that we now hear on the radio. This has not only cheapened the artistic value of the music industry, but has also led to a certain formulaic sound that most hits fall into today. The crazy thing about all of this is that most of these behind-the-scenes writers hide in the shadows, with most people not even realizing that these select individuals are responsible for their favorite songs. Two of the most successful of these shadow songwriters are Max Martin and Lucas Gottwald, also known as Dr. Luke. While Dr. Luke may ring some bells in your mind due to his press coverage, during litigation brought against him by pop artist Kesha a few years ago, most don't know just how many of the past decade's hits are directly attributed to these two songwriters. Let's start with Max Martin. Famous for not doing interviews, Martin has shown reluctance to divulging his success and songwriting secrets that have led to becoming one of the biggest stars that you've likely never heard of. The 51-year-old maestro has written some of the absolute biggest smashes in recent history, including 22 number one records. These include Baby One More Time by Britney Spears, Katy Perry's I Kissed a Girl, and The Weeknd's Can't Feel My Face. In an interview with Variety, Martin divulged some of his tricks of the trade, confirming that his songwriting process is linear and varies very little when taking things like artist and genre into account. He often does not care about having correct grammar, as poor grammatical lyrics often sell big. He also always employs an equal number of syllables in all of his songs. Martin also is a huge proponent of collaboration in the writing process. While it is common practice for songwriters to collaborate and fuel each other's ideas, Martin is more speaking to a much larger scale of collaboration, with some songs having production credit lists spanning close to a paragraph. It is clear that in Max Martin's process, the emphasis is on the process that has proved tried and true, rather than the artistic ability of the performer. In fact, in 2018, the average number of writers credited on the top 100 hits of the year was 5.4. You heard that right. An average of five people wrote the top 100 songs in 2018 alone. Frequent collaborator of Martin's and star songwriter in his own right, Lucas Gottwald, Dr. Luke follows a similar structure in his song creation, with credits on mega hits such as Since You've Been Gone by Kelly Clarkson, Wrecking Ball by Miley Cyrus, and Katy Perry's California Girls. Dr. Luke is another major cog in the current music industry's songwriting machine. 
He has twice been named as the ASCAP Songwriter of the Year and has received numerous other awards for songs he has had a hand in creating. While a household name within the industry, Dr. Luke would have likely been much less known had it not been for the 2013 lawsuit brought against him by frequent collaborator Kesha. The artist claimed that Gottwald had restricted her creative control and frequently sexually abused her and other major artists, including Katy Perry. While the allegations were dismissed, Dr. Luke's reputation in the industry did take a hit. Regardless, he has re-emerged as of late and is back at it again crafting hit songs like his recent release Say So by emerging female artist Doja Cat. He has noted over the years that his process is similar to Martin's. If something works the first time, it can be rinsed and repeated over and over again for continued success. So we've established that players like Martin and Gottwald take advantage of a production line type of approach to crank out hit after hit, and it works. The two have written countless top 100 songs over the past 20 years, and that is nothing to scoff at. The word hit record is a bit overused, but this record was actually number one in every single country on the planet it was released. The two have been successful along with many other songwriters, but is this a good thing for the overall music industry? While it can be argued that when successful songs sell extremely well, it is a good thing for all involved, the performers, the writers, labels, and on down the line. But that doesn't mean there aren't negative side effects of cheapening an art form down to a formula. Since the dawn of time, nothing has been able to capture the imagination and control emotion like music. Some of the greatest human feats were accomplished on instruments and with human vocal cords. There's something so innately beautiful about one or two people sitting down with nothing more than their own creative gifts and producing captivating songs that resonate with other people. What Max Martin and Dr. Luke do is far from that. They have cracked a code of sorts, and many feel their contributions to the industry have had an overall negative impact on the world of music. Artists like Oasis's Noel Gallagher believe that music at its core shouldn't have so many involved. The separation of the writer from the performer lessens the impact and the power of the creation. And he is not alone. Many people find the popular music of today to be wholly repetitive across artists and genres. Themes of each genre have become extremely stringent, and it seems that each new number one is just a slightly altered version of the last. There is a counter-argument though. Max Martin argues in the previously mentioned Variety article that pop music has always been a collaborative effort citing acts such as Elvis Presley and Whitney Houston as successes in the industry that made their living by performing songs written by others. He states that, I think art is art, however, it's made. Great artists have always had songs written for them by teams. This is not false. There are countless artists who enjoyed astronomical success on the backs of songs they had little to no input in during their creation. In Martin's eyes, People like him and Dr. Luke are only furthering the journey down the path that was started long before either of their careers began. But the fact is, it's poison to the tip of the arrow. The key issue here is musical personality. Play a song to me. You know a Bob Dylan song when you hear it, but for artists such as the frequent collaborators of Martin and Gottwald, there seems to be a dampening of artists' identities. You aren't necessarily able to hear a Katy Perry song or a Doja Cat song and know it belongs to them right off the bat, outside of knowing their individual vocal identities. Rhythms, top line melodies, song structure, and thematic elements have become so repetitive in the 21st century that music seems to be losing its individuality on the major pop scale in favor of thematic and melodic elements that have proven to sell. For those that don't have an appetite for artistic individuality, this is likely not an issue for you. And if you're someone who enjoys the current style of pop music, this is a non-issue for you as well. But there are millions of those who have a deeper appreciation for music and creativity as a whole. Can you imagine a future where the Louvre is filled with pieces of art created by artificial intelligence? Art and individuality are under attack. And this is no small issue. 
Music should be a personal creation and should never follow a template of sorts just in hopes of selling millions of records. Art was born out of creativity and a desire to express that emotion, and not out of greed. So the next time you hear a new hit song on your favorite pop radio station, think about the elements of the song that seem familiar. They might just have been created by the likes of Max Martin and Dr. Luke. What do you think? Do you mind that a small group of individuals are currently crafting much of the music you hear on the radio? Do you miss the days when artists were able to have their own musical identities and write for themselves? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more content.